These Ravens be moving money around so they can add a player? <laughs> well, certainly won't be Jarvis Landry. Anyway, YouTube, Team Keep It Clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Happy Saturday, or really whenever you're watching this. Hope your day is going very, very, very well. Um, yesterday was very fun. A uh, couple of turn of events. Um, getting hoodwinked again. Uh, Ravens are the ultimate leverage team once again. Uh, but what's new? What's new? Nothing is. Uh, so Nick Boyle, Nick Boyle said, "What he said? Y'all, y'all thought I was about to get cut? They had everybody looking at post June first cuts. Everybody was looking at what the dead money would be, different possibilities." And Nick Boyle said, "No, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, they drafted them two tight ends. Yeah, that's cool. I ain't leaving. Uh, and but I wonder if the Ravens approached him and they were like, Nick Boyle, we love you." We value you, but you will either be cut or you're going to agree to a pay cut. You choose. I wonder if they did that, especially with it being so late in the off season, because it's I'm not saying the Ravens did it, but it's what a lot of teams do because they will have these players rework their deals late in the season because the later that you have them agree to a deal, the, the, the later you make a transaction with a player where they could possibly be cut, the less chance they have of getting picked up. Um, so it is, and it's a business. It happens. Um, but I'm not saying the Ravens did it, but we'll never know. Anyway, um, with Nick Boyle, Perfield Yates, he said, Ravens, uh, Nick Boyle agreed to a rework contract. Uh, his salary of five mil was lowered to 1.12 mil with a 2.63 signing bonus plus another 1.25 mil he can earn in incentives now i wonder what those incentives are i wonder if they will be catches uh, i wonder if they will be touchdowns uh playing time percentage it could be anything but usually um when there are incentives with a contract when an account when a contract is incentive based it can be very, very hard to earn those incentives because um, incentives also, they, um, they make a deal look a lot bigger uh, than what it truly is because you can hear of these deals, oh, this deal is worth, worth up to 25 mil. It's like, oh, man, that's a lot of money. But then you say, oh, well, uh, 10 mil of that are in incentives. It's like, oh, okay, well, they got to do X, Y, and Z to reach that extra 10 mil so they can really get the 25 mil. Um, a lot like Bobby Wagner's deal. Um, I think his deal was like two year, 24 mil, something like that. I forgot what it was, but a lot of it was incentives based. Because again, we know with him, Ravens offered more guaranteed money. So money that he would have got no matter what. But Rams offered a bigger overall contract with incentives. Um, and it says uh, one mil of his 2023 salary was converted to a roster bonus next year. So this created 2.565 mil in cap space so ravens made a move to get them some more bread but what does it mean are they clearing out money uh to add a player they could be they could be and again the expectation is still that they add a veteran at wide receiver i mean they they are clearly searching for <laughs> they are clearly searching for another wide receiver They've been turned down and burned and shut down a lot, but they are clearly looking to add another guy. Jarvis Landry, he said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Nope, I'm going to go to New Orleans. And he's from there again. Um, and Jalen Riga, the, the Eagles, they, nope, mm -mm, no thanks. Mm, no. Nah, mm -mm, mm -mm. So that was that. Um, but we'll see what happens next. Again, with the whole Jarvis Landry thing, the public interest, public interest. So next time I hear about somebody that the Ravens are interested in publicly, don't go for it. Don't bite. Don't bite. Um, <clears throat> I've been seeing a lot of talk about, because, again, the conversation has been a lot about Jarvis Landry. Uh, obviously, because that was the most recent guy. Um, but I've been seeing a lot of talk about Giro this, Giro that. Oh, man, as long as the Ravens 
they have Giro, then nobody's going to want to come here. Nobody's going to want to play. No wide receivers are going to want to play for the Ravens uh, unless it's like a super, 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 super last resort type of thing. Um, I disagree. I disagree. reason I disagree is because, say, for instance, Giro gets fired. Giro gets fired. Um, Ravens and, and Harbaugh hires whoever is next at offensive coordinator. The complaints are going to happen again. It's going to happen again. This is, I know a lot of people want to make it just a Greg Roman offense thing, a Greg Roman scheme thing. Oh, it's Greg Roman, Greg Roman, Greg Roman. But this whole wide receiver thing, I was just talking to my guy Kevin about this a couple minutes ago. This whole wide receiver thing, wide receivers not wanting to come to the Ravens, play for the Ravens. This has been happening long before Greg Roman. Long before Greg Roman. Before Greg Roman even stepped foot <laughs> as Ravens run game coordinator. And then, of course, he got promoted to offensive. This has been happening before then. Before then. This has been had, and this is not a Lamar Jackson, because, you know, some people like to make, oh, <laughs> nobody wants to play with Lamar. It's been happening way before Lamar was even thought of. To, it, was, it was way before look, there was even a pre-draft visit with Lamar Jackson. It's been happening for a long time, man. So it, it's, it's been a thing to where the Ravens, they just, they don't, they don't value wide receiver like that. Because they, they, that's how they've been built. That's what they've been based on. The run game. The run game, run game, run game. And play good defense. That's how it's been. So, as far as free agent wide receivers, yeah, it's, look at the Ravens history. It, it's been pretty tough uh, for the longest. So, in order for the Ravens, it's going to take a lot. It will take some, like, some seismic changes in order for the Ravens to really be an attractive destination to free agent wide receivers. It would. And some of those seismic changes that would have to happen, it would have to start upstairs. It would have to start upstairs. It would have to be a philosophy change. Funny because we talked about philosophy change super early in this offseason. Super, super early. A long time ago. A very long time ago. And we talked about how we weren't, weren't even calling for nobody to be fired. We weren't calling for nobody to be fired. But we said in that video with philosophy changes, it got to start from the top. It has to. Steve Bishotti, Eric DaCosta, John Harbaugh. It got to start with those guys. It has to. Because they could, again, they could fire Greg Roman. Maybe, all right, Greg Roman, bye. But they would just hire the next guy who uh, Ravens fans going to end up complaining about him too, an offensive coordinator. It's gonna ha it, it would happen because the philosophy changed. And until a philosophy change is reached, it's going to continue to be the same type of offense. It's going to run heavy. Yeah, we're throwing some passes here and there, quite like, cool, and play, play good defense. Today's NFL, man, is... Again, the run game is cool. Defense is cool. But the passing game has to be taken to another level. You have to have consistent playmakers in the passing game. And I know, like, right now, they, they, the way that they set things up, it's looking like they like, all right, Greg Roman. All right, Giro. It's all on you, brother. You got it. Take it over. Take it away. Do your thing. Because they are building this thing up. To where Greg Roman has some significant tight ends. He got some playmakers at tight ends. They got a strong offensive line, strong running game. And receivers, they like, oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. So that's what it is. That's what it is. But again, um, it's gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be more turndowns from like significant guys. It's gonna be. It's gonna continue to be that same thing until Ravens actually have a philosophy change. Another thing that the Ravens will have to do, they will have to show. Like they'll have. It'll. It'll have to be more than just a philosophy. Well, obviously with a philosophy change, you'll see the the change on the field. You'll see the change uh, in the scheme and whatnot. But it would. It would have to be shown in action too. 
you would have to see the results. Like, oh, oh, that's what they're doing over there now? Okay, cool, cool, cool. And that's on both coaching and the players, too. So coaching would have to implement just a, a new scheme, a new philosophy, and the players, they would have to execute it. Now, with Lamar Jackson, a big thing with him, and we talked about this way before it was even a thought of Hollywood being traded. Well, Lamar Jackson, we talked about him just spreading the ball out more. Him, because we all know uh, 5 and 89, they, they were going to get theirs. Ooh, we knew that for sure they were going to get theirs. But now spreading it out to other guys too, to making other guys get their opportunities as well. And really like trying to see what those guys got. And again, that's on coaching to implement those guys into the game plan. And that's on Lamar to give those, excuse me, to give those guys a shot. And it's, it's important. And now this year, it's like I was talking to my guy JT about this yesterday. Like then we talked about it plenty of times before that, too. But this year, like now with the Hollywood situation, he got traded. OK, cool. So now Lamar is he's forced to look at other guys that much more. He's forced because one of his main targets, one of his main go-tos, is gone. It's gone. He's out. And it ain't like, oh, he's he's suspended for a couple games or he'll be injured for a couple games. No, no, no. He's completely removed from the situation as a whole. He's in Arizona. So now with Lamar Jackson, it's like, all right, you still got 89 there. So you still gonna look 89 away. But now you got to, oh, Bateman, okay. Oh, Proche, okay. Tyler, okay. Duvin, oh, okay. And who else they end up signing? Because, you know, somebody coming. But for now, oh, oh, likely, okay. Oh, oh, Kyle, okay, okay. And then, oh, 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 JK, okay. Oh, Gus, okay. Okay, Batty. I, I know it ain't Batty. I know it's Beatty. But anyway, so you, you see my point. Oh, Mike Davis, okay. Justice here, okay. And again, that's for now. We know things are going to change. But... So, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's on everybody. Everybody definitely has their uh, share of responsibility that they have for really um, making this situation with the Ravens look a lot better as far as wide receivers, um, as far as this being a destination where they will want to come. Now, here, offense, this is the offensive lineman's dream. Offensive lineman's dream, oh, the Ravens, oh, yeah, 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 sign me up. Running backs, dream, oh, yeah, yeah, sign me up. Defensive players dream. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm cool. I'm ready. Let's go. Titans dream. But it's just wide well, receiver. That's the that's the only one where it's like <laughs> a nightmare. We help, man. <laughs>